in the binder library, you can easily see all the binders you have created and received. To see the library, click on the library button. If you hover over a binder, you will see the full name, when it was created, and other information. Double click on the selected binder to open it. The title bar of the library tells you what library you are viewing. By default, it shows you your My Binders directory organized onto a bookcase. If you click on the drop down list, you can switch to view the binders, for example, in Dropbox if you have a Dropbox account. These types of cloud services allow you to store and share binders easily via the Internet. To start browsing a binder, simply click on the cover. This will open the binder and reveal its structure, table of contents, tabs and documents inside each tab. If it is a new binder, there will be no cover artwork, just like this example. If you want to personalize your binder and later identify what the contents is easily, then you need to add a cover and probably a color. To modify the cover, you can either use the binder menu or right click on the cover or simply drag and drop the artwork onto the cover. To change the color, right click on the cover, select properties. That was easy and fun too. There is only one table of contents, but two representations of it in Binder. The table of contents page represents the correct physical position in the Binder for pagination, printing and navigation. The tabs and documents are links that take you directly to the pages inside Binder. The table of contents panel, instead, slides out from the left-hand toolbar and is always visible over the Binder contents. Clicking on tabs or documents also allows you to jump directly to where you need. However, this panel does a lot more. Add and remove documents, rearrange documents and tabs, and so on. To find out more about its capabilities, refer to the How to Add Documents to Your Binder video. As we continue to explore all the ways you can navigate and browse through your binder, let's look at the most obvious and intuitive way, using tabs. Tabs let you jump straight to the relevant section of a binder with a single click or touch. There are two representations of the tab header on each side of the binder to allow you to jump to the start and end of a tab, and very convenient when you're using a touch device for both thumbs. If the name of a tab has been shortened because it does not fit in the tab, hover over it to see the full name. To change the name or color of the tab, right click on it and select Tab properties. Documents you want to organize later can be placed in the unfiled tab, then drag to an existing tab or create a new one. Once you're in a tab, you can either use the table of contents to jump to individual documents, then easily navigate the pages with a mouse click or a finger swipe on touch screens. You can also use the search control to find key words throughout all the documents in a binder. Another way to find what you are looking for quickly. And last but not least, you can also navigate using the navigation slider at the bottom of the binder. It is divided in, into color bars which correspond to the tab divider colors and the size of the segment corresponds to the number of pages in each section. As you scroll through it, it shows you the document title, page number and date. The icon on the right of the slider lets you switch between page and date order. Try it and see how easy it is to jump straight to a document page. As you can see, it was very quick and easy to navigate and browse through your binder.